Today, I want to give you a deep dive and tutorial into my favorite portfolio tracking tool called Portfolio Performance. And best of all, the tool is free of charge. I'll show you how you can make graphs like this, which shows my entire portfolio overview, have all your assets listed like this with a nice and easy to see overview of every single one and the performance, plus some more dashboards and reports like this where you can easily see how your portfolio is doing. If this sounds interesting, then stick around. Right, to download the tool, it's very simple. You just go to portfolio-performance.info and then you have it or in German or in English so you can really download it and get going. You can see here all the various uh, platforms it's supported on, Mac, Windows, and even Linux, which is great. And you get a few teasers here uh, where you can see um, all the things and graphs and, and so on you can do with it. The great thing is open source, so it keeps on developing, it's free of charge, and there's more and more amendments coming. For example, cryptocurrency didn't used to be supported, but now they added it as well. So you can really track pretty much any asset class out there, which is amazing. So super simple, you download it, install it, and you are good to go. Right, so once you set up, it will look something like this, where you have all your different assets, uh, all your securities, all listed here. And in the beginning, it might not quite look like this. Obviously, you have to start your entire database and build it up from scratch. So if you had a lot of investments in the past, it might take a while to import them. But honestly, I really think it's worthwhile to go through the exercise and have it all consolidated. Because in the past for me as well, I didn't really track my portfolio. So I had some in the apps, some in my Excel sheets, some on Yahoo Finance. So it was all over the show. But then people ask me, Kai, how's your portfolio doing? And honestly, I had no idea because, you know, in one app, I might be up. In another app, a broker, I might be down. So it was really hard for me to track how my overall investments are doing. So that's why I think it's super, super important to have one tool that really brings it all together. Now, this is manual input. They do have a PDF importer as well that only works for certain brokers. And I tried it. It's a hit and miss, which basically, you know, where you export a PDF from your broker, import it here, and it extracts the data and inputs the data. Still, I realized doing it manually was the better way. And you know, if you've been investing for 15 years, obviously to go back all these 15 years might be a little bit long. So what I would suggest, maybe start from January this year and start importing all the transactions you made. Probably you didn't have more than 100 transactions, I would say. So even that might take a while, but once they're in here, at least you can start tracking your performance over time. Right, so once you started, obviously you don't have anything in here. You would go to file and create new. And from here, you can choose your base currency. Now that obviously depends on the country where you're in, but choose the local one where you mostly do your transactions. In my case, it's Euro, but you can select from pretty much any currency out there, which is great. But in my case, it would be Euros. Right, you go ahead and then you have to add a securities account. So that's for example, your stock brokerage or your bank account or your crypto exchange, whatever you use. So in my case, as you know, I use Nexo. So I would be putting Nexo here because that's where I buy my cryptocurrencies. And then you have the reference account. So that's basically your currency exchange account. So I would have a reference account in euros. I would have a reference account in dollars. So all the different currencies account you use, just put them here and don't worry, you can always add or remove later on. So in this case, let's put Euro account. Okay, I click on add and boom, you can see here, this is associated Nexo with my Euro account. I can also have a dollar account with Nexo. So you can always add later on. This is just to get you started. I click on next, then I can put a cash account, additional cash accounts in case you want. I can put your USD, which I obviously also use quite a bit to transact. And yes, then we continue. And here you can add some instruments. Uh, if you wanted to right away, you can choose different markets, etc. But I don't want to do it here and I'll show you a better way where you can do that. Click on next. And once again, a few other things, but for now, don't worry about it. It's really nice. You will see you can add on so many ways uh, later on. Click on finish and boom, you are good to go. Now, the first thing you really want to do is make sure you save it. So click on save and then give it a name and save it on your file, ideally on a shared drive, because that's the file you're going to be using wherever you go. That file, you can open any computer anywhere that has portfolio performance installed. So that's a super, super important file. So make sure to always save it. It doesn't auto save, unfortunately. So you always have to save before you go. It's a little bit old school in that way, but honestly, that file will quickly become your main master file of all your investments. From here, you basically have a blank canvas where you can start putting things together. You can see there's really nothing yet. And it all starts by adding security. So very quickly, I'll show you, it has a lot of customizations. I really just want to run you through the most important things, how you can start setting up your portfolio. So most importantly, you start adding instruments and you click over here on the plus sign and say new instrument. Um, so let's start with Apple, right? Uh, then you can see, again, it's sometimes a little bit overwhelming. It's not as visually uh, appealing as some other online websites maybe, but you will see it's so much more powerful and platform agnostic, which I really like. I select Apple, okay? So go ahead and then you can kind of customize a little bit how you want to see certain things. Now, first of all, I don't like the name. The official name is Apple Inc. Um, but in my case, I prefer just Apple, right? Uh, in terms of currency, um, obviously I know I will buy it in USD. I will buy it through interactive brokers. That's the official symbol. 
And um, yeah, that's more or less all over here. Then I can click on additional attributes and here you can click other things, for example, a logo. But I'll show you in a second how that would work out. Then taxonomies, that's also something very interesting and I'll show you in a second what that means um, as we don't have any edit for now. And then you have historical quotes. So here basically you say from which feed the quotes are being pulled. So usually I like to select Yahoo Finance and then you just select Apple default. And then you can see here, it takes a second and it will bring up all the past quotes. So that's basically, you know, the latest quotes you can get. Of course, if you want to choose, uh, you can select another uh, data provider, but I like Yahoo Finance very much. And then last quote, um, yeah, that's not something really relevant here. And with this, you can click OK and boom, you have your security in place. That's just the security added to your portfolio. Sometimes you just want to have it as a watch list, for example, but if you wanted to buy or sell, you need to have it in your securities account to later on buy it. If it's not there, you can't buy it. So first you need to add it and then you can buy it. Right, and as you know me, I also like my cryptos. So let's quickly add also cryptocurrency, which you can do as well. And that's very simple as well. So click on new instruments and then the same exercise. So let's go ahead with the biggest crypto of all, which is of course my beloved Bitcoin. So I will select it over here. In this case, I can have Bitcoin USD. I could also have Bitcoin Euro. So it's up to you. In this case, I obviously buy in euros. I want to see the euro price. So let's say apply. And then I see that over here. I want to leave a Bitcoin Euro, so I know it's Bitcoin Euro, but you could change if you wanted to. Of course, currency is Euro. Additional attributes, uh, we'll show you in a second where to add it once again. And historical quotes. Again, I want to change to Yahoo Finance, but it already selected it. So the data looks correct and I can go ahead and add it. So here I have my two securities. Now, in order to make it a bit more pretty, I could go into edit, go over to additional attributes and then add the logo. I know it's a little bit cumbersome, it's maybe not the nicest, but you know, it does the trick. I click OK and boom, I have the logo here. And you know, I like to do that. I'm a little bit of a perfectionist and I like to just have it visually nice. So let's do the same exercise for Bitcoin. Obviously, you just download the image and logo from Google Images for free and boom, there you have it and it just looks much cleaner. Okay, so we have our two securities in place. So let's say I wanted to buy Apple. Now, as I said in the beginning, I added one securities account, which was Nexo, but obviously I would buy my Apple not through Nexo because they don't allow you stock trading. So I have to add another securities account and let's call it Interactive Brokers. Uh, my reference account um, would be US dollars because there I buy in US dollars. And um, yeah, I could, if I wanted to also add logos here, but for the time being, that's fine. So let's right click on Apple and click on buy. And then I can basically select, I want to buy it in Excel. No, on interactive brokers, yes. And US dollars, yes. And let's imagine I bought it sometime last month on the 14th of September. And I bought exactly one share, which was worth $138. Now that's the current price. Obviously you might have bought it for less. You could change it over here as well. Let's say you were lucky and bought it at $120. So probably you would have made a gain by now. Um, so you, know, you can really put the actuals plus any fees you might have incurred or taxes. Uh, but let's say I'm happy with this. I say save and boom, immediately it will be added. And you will see that in my statement of accounts. I have now one share of Apple with a market value of 142 euros. Let's do the same for my Bitcoins. Let's buy a quick Bitcoin. I can click once again over here. I bought a Bitcoin on Nexo. I would select Euro account as I bought it with Euro. I bought it on the 1st of October and I bought 0.01, which equates to around 200 euros. I'm okay with this. And now in the statement of accounts, you can see immediately um, what basically I own. One more thing you should always be aware of, go into your deposit account and you can see here a negative balance because basically it works like a ledger, right? You first have to put money into that bank account in order to buy something from it. Now we haven't done this before. So what I would suggest to do is always add the same amount beforehand, but you can also do this post factum. You can buy your stocks now, it lets you buy. You can see it's now negative, but I always like to then afterwards go in and uh, basically deposit and uh, obviously I bought, I uh, don't remember when, on the 14th, but let's say I made a deposit beforehand and I would just add the same amount as you can see here on the screen. Um, obviously I needed the money to buy the stocks and then you will see it's immediately zero. And the same with the dollars, the dollars are used for buying my stocks. So the same principle here, let's say I made a deposit also uh, sometime uh, early September of 120.12 and it's down to zero. So I just want to keep it zero because I don't want to show my cash balance. You could track your cash balance as well here. In principle, this is just basically the reference amount where money goes in and out. So I always like to keep it zero, but it's really up to you. For example, I've seen here even people tracking watches, right? If you want to account, let's say you have a Rolex. You can put here Rolex and let's say the Rolex has a value of, um, I don't know, 
probably quite expensive, 50,000. Uh, then you can add it here and you can track your intangible assets as well, which is really amazing. Even real estate, and I'll show you in a second later in the graphs, you can include it into your total portfolio. So it's really powerful. Obviously, you can't pull the market value on your Rolex, but you have it here and kind of see your real net worth if you wanted to. But in case you want to add a dividend, that's also super simple. Let's say Apple, which obviously pays a dividend. You just go on here, right click, and then go on dividend. And from here, you can say, okay, which cash account is it going to in USD because I bought in USD, so I would get it in USD. Um, let's say I got the dividend paid out whenever it was, obviously in your case. Let's imagine it was on the 20th of September uh, as I had one share. And you know, here you would put the gross value that you got paid out. So let's say I got $2.2, which it converts directly into euros. But as you can see, well, now with the dollar euro parity, pretty much is the same. Um, and then you just click on save and there it is. And now it will be in your deposit account because basically it's a deposit into your account, right? And then you could go into your payments and see here any payments that you've received. You can see here now that in September you have received a dividend from Apple and the more uh, stocks you have, uh, you could start tracking this here as well as some uh, visualization, uh, you know, over the time how things develop. And um, yeah, the more you add, the more it's nice to see how it grows over time. Obviously now with one stock, it's not very representative, but the longer you do it, the more you add, you will really start seeing trends and patterns, which is great. Now then something I really like is taxonomies where you can basically have different asset classes. And let's click on this asset classes and we go into it here and then you just uh, open those two things up. And you can see here assets without classifications. But firstly, I wanna add a few asset classes. So I'm gonna go right click, add new classification and I call it stocks. And I always like to add a nice emoji. Let's say stocks of course should go up and boom. So I have that here. And then of course I also want to add cryptos. So let's add crypto. Of course, crypto deserves a nice diamond. Diamond hands, always good. Uh, we need it in these times. And then the others you can leave or delete, um, you know, things like debit for me, actually I don't need real estate. I don't track at the moment and commodities I also don't own or plan to track anytime soon. And from here, very quickly, I can move my assets into those asset classes. So obviously Apple is a stock, so I move into here, done. Bitcoin is a crypto, so I move it into here, done. And then from here, I can move into cash, my euros, and of course my dollars. Um, bam. And I still have my Rolex, which I don't have, but in case you do have a Rolex, you could obviously track that as well. So let's say uh, other classifications, and we call it collect bolts and we add the Rolex in here. And as you can see, you can also change the colors here if you wanted to, but you know, that's later on, you can change the different graphs, etc. And then you have some powerful graphs over here. And one of them is for example, the asset class overview. Now, as you can see, the Rolex really took over most of it. So in this case, let me quickly go back. So let me change the price of the Rolex. Now I go back into transactions and then I can see here, basically all the transactions that you've ever inputted. So here you would see every single one and you could go back and make any changes if you wanted to. In this case, I want to edit the transaction. And obviously just for the sake of the exercise, Size. So let's say it has only a value of 100 euros. Okay, so now we can see it looks much more meaningful. I can see here my stocks currently have a proportion of 32% of my portfolio. Crypto has 44% and collectibles 22%. And then in each one, I can see what goes under what. And once again, as I said, you can change the colors around. If you don't like that, it's really up to you. But it's just a nice, simple overview of how things are going. Then in terms of trades, you can see here, basically uh, my trades are still open. In case I sold my Apple, it would still stay in my portfolio as a history, but it would say closed because I'm not anymore in the trade. So that's really nice to see what is open because the longer you trade, obviously you will have a few positions that you would have uh, sold eventually. So those will be closed, but then you can see also the history on those. Payments, we had a look at it. This is all your dividend payments, potentially staking rewards from your cryptocurrency. You can track those here as well. Then the chart, which is really good. And you can see how your portfolio is developing in terms of overall performance. You could also change, uh, once again, the color if you wanted to. Uh, I always like to see it in yellow. It's just a bit more uh, easy to see on the eye. So let's have it yellow. Okay, you could also add benchmark if you wanted to, which is great, for example, S&P 500. So I always like to see how my portfolio is doing versus the S&P 500. So you could add that or any other index that you wanted to track. Then you can go to the holdings where once again, you have a very simple pie chart showing you all your individual holdings. And yeah, just once again, very nice to see how things are going. Then again, the statement of assets, this is where you have the main overview. And from here, you have endless customization opportunities. You can really add, you know, for example, obviously one thing you wanted to see is your profit and loss. You know, once you click it, 
it will be here. You can also move the columns around if you wanted to, but let's leave it here. Then what else? Like note, I don't need to see the note. So let's unselect that. Instead, I wanted to see, for example, dividends, sum of all dividends uh, for one year. I can see how much dividend I got for each one. Great. Then I want to see the purchase price and that's the average price I bought it for. So in this case, obviously the price I bought it for is the price, but the more I bought over time and dollar cost my way in, I could see still the average price I paid for a particular stock or crypto. So that's really powerful. You can see what's your average cost price for that asset class. And then once again, I can move it around, you know, what I bought it for, what the market value is, and then I can see immediately the profit here. So, so you can really play around with what it is, what you want to see, uh, taxonomies, you know, asset class you could add uh, if you wanted to. So it's really up to you how you want to structure it, but overall super customizable, super powerful. And the more you add to it, the more powerful it gets. And lastly, one great overview is the performance dashboard. Now here you can really add a lot and I can go back into my own and show you how it looks like. So I've basically uh, structured it into every single one of my different asset classes. So you could do the same, but basically you can play around with it. You have already a few of them listed here, but it's very simple to add more. You just go on right click widget. And from here you can add, you know, different headings, descriptions. You can add different statements of assets. You can have different performance metrics, risk indicators, earnings, and trades. So most importantly, obviously is performance. So let's say I want to have a monthly returns in a heat map. So I can click on this. If you had a bit of trading history already included, you would see here the performance for 21 and of course 22 by every single month. And you can see here in September, I actually had a 7.5% positive return, which is great. If it was negative, it would be in red. So it's very simple at a glimpse of an eye to see what sort of your returns have been month by month. And the good thing is you can always move it around where you want to have it. And let's say you want to see it on this side, you can just move it around. So you can really start building up your own dashboard. Plus you can right click on here and then sort of add the label, change the reporting period or have a different data series. So if you want to click on this, you could select to see only Apple stock, so only Bitcoin. So you can really tailor it to your liking and that's why I did it for every single asset class. I would use my taxonomies and then basically start tracking all my cryptos and then all my stocks. So I would have it for that specifically and one column just for crypto, one for stocks, one for ETFs. So it's very simple to see per asset class how I'm doing. I've done one layout for my entire portfolio, which basically tracks everything. And then I've done basically copy paste for all the other asset classes I have. So I can see with a glimpse how my portfolio is doing and then quickly how each individual asset class is performing as well. And that's really it guys. I mean, it's really a powerful tool and you will see the more you start using it and the more you start tracking your investments and inputting every single trade over time, you really start seeing trends and deep analysis of how your entire portfolio is doing. Because the more you invest in different cryptos, ETFs and stocks on different platforms, you're gonna get lost eventually. So having a central place for this, I really, really enjoy it. And it really helped me to stay on top of my investments. Best of all, it's free. Granted, it's maybe not the most pretty interface to look at and they don't have an app at the moment. But at the end of the day, it's the only tool I actually found that really helps me to track every single asset class out there. Because even Yahoo Finance, I couldn't track, for example, collectibles such as a Rolex watch or real estate or P2P loans. How I use the tool personally is basically whenever I place a trade, immediately afterwards I open portfolio performance, update the trade, the stocks, whatever I bought, and then basically have it in the system right then and there and then go to Yahoo Finance and also import it into my portfolio because with Yahoo Finance, I have a widget on my phone where I can see at a glance how my overall portfolio is doing. Yes, it doesn't have everything because it doesn't feature as many asset classes as portfolio performance does, but it's a good overview to know where I'm going. Plus at the end of every single month, I once again compare my actual holdings in the crypto exchanges or stock brokers and then see that I'm aligned, that everything matches up. Plus I would add any staking rewards that I got during the month. Basically I would add it to my crypto holdings at zero cost and just increase the shares. So it will show that my holdings of that particular crypto, in my case Nexo, is growing. And of course any dividends, whenever I do get a payout, I add them to my dividends as well. I hope you found this portfolio performance tutorial useful. If you have any more questions, pop them in the comments below. I get back to every single one of you. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel, it means the world to me. As always guys, stay healthy, get wealthy, and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.